So today I want to bring you a slightly out of the ordinary video and instead of sharing some tips, techniques, or brewing a beer, I just want to talk about one of my favorite aspects of this hobby, uh, which is actually glassware. Um, I am a massive glassware nerd and a little bit of a collector as well, so I have a ton of different glassware for well, many different types of beer, uh, but one of my favorite things about this whole thing is actually just traveling to different locations, picking up different glassware and, uh, you know, using it in stylistically appropriate beers. And today I wanted to go over why glassware actually matters and um, just kind of share my love of this particular part of the uh, beer drinking and brewing hobby. Glassware matters, first of all. There's definitely a difference when you are drinking a beer straight out of a can or straight out of a bottle versus when you pour it into a glass and you can look at it, see it, enjoy it, and um, it just elevates the whole experience. And also, add to that, sometimes glassware is specifically designed for certain types of beer for certain reasons. So today I just kind of want to go over some of the more particular glasses that are designed around certain types of beer. And it's really fun because a lot of different regions also have very similar glass designs uh, for their similar types of beer. Bear in mind, this is not a complete list and I have an ever-expanding collection of glassware, but I want to share with you some of some of the stories that I have surrounding some of the glassware that I own and talk to you about each one. Everything out here in the front is basically what you would drink a Belgian style beer out of. So this is here a wine glass actually. It's, it's technically a wine glass, but it is designed for beer and it's particularly designed for farmhouse beer because this is a Hill Farmstead branded glass. So some of this isn't totally clean, I apologize. I got this glass about four years ago from a friend of mine who had uh, attended the Hill Farmstead Festival of Farmhouse Ales in 2018 and brought this glass back with him and he had two of them and he only wanted one, so I got to keep this one. This glass is really designed to funnel the aromatics and the flavors of a farmhouse ale, which are quite intense and pungent and um, sometimes a bit funky. <laughs> Those, that funnels them directly into your nose as you take a sip. Uh, and it also, you know, it's a really elegant looking glass. It's one of my favorites. It doesn't come out very frequently because it's very fragile, but uh, it's definitely a good option for sort of farmhouse, Brett's, Saison's, that sort of thing. Next on the list is this, my West Vletteren glass. I got this during my trip to Belgium. Uh, it is a really, really cool glass. This is a goblet or chalice style glass. Um, which is basically the normal presentation of a Belgian Trappist ale or just most Belgian ales in general. One of my favorite things about Belgium is that every single beer out there has its own assigned glassware that's designed for that specific beer and how to best present it and best get a good flavor and drinking experience. Goblets are like that so that you can take big quaffs of the very dry, very drinkable, but extremely aromatic and extremely flavorful beers that they have um, it also holds a whole lot of head. So Belgian beers are extremely high carbonated and therefore when you pour them out of a bottle, you often have a ton of head that comes out of it. And this extra space and this extra wide high surface area allows not only lots of head to come out, but also tons of aromatics to be released from that head. So that's why it's designed to be that way. You'll see a couple different variations on that design like this one here, but it's still kind of the same principle. A large bowl, basically. That being said, this is more of a uh, rounded edge on it, which kind of traps in more aromatics, traps in more flavors. So this is good for different kinds of styles besides trap sales. You could drink blondes out of this, Belgian Golden Strongs out of this. You can also drink IPAs if you want to. Anything with high aromatics does very well in a glass like this. This Rapscallion glass I actually picked up at a yard sale. So here is a Chimay glass that I brought back from Belgium as well. Another good classic Belgian design that also happens to work really well in modern beer is this, the Tulip. It's different from the others because you see it tapers up towards the rim, um, but then also has a slightly outward flare on it. But you can also make these a little bit taller and capture a little bit more head. You can have a large, tall design like this one. This is an Omegang glass that I got at that brewery. This was actually probably the first like real glassware uh, piece that I added to my collection way back when I started getting into craft beer. So now, in kind of the opposite of Two World Wars, I'm going to move from Belgium into Germany and we're gonna go on to our next set of glassware. This is a beer mug or a beer stein. This is a dimpled stein half liter mug from Hofbrauhaus. Um, I actually picked this up at a German beer bar uh, at my college. It's a really interesting glass because 
The mug handle is designed to keep the beer cold. So instead of transferring heat from your hand into the beer, it's actually just gonna go into the handle and it keeps your beer colder for longer. This is typically a beer glass you're gonna drink a lager out of because the dimpled character really plays with the light in so many cool ways. And when you have something like an amber colored Oktoberfest in this thing, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous way to drink your beer. And it's so much nicer than drinking it straight out of a bottle. Another variation on the Dippled Stein is the Dippled Mug, which I have here. This is gonna be more of like a Czech style beer glass. You'll see it in CH's video when he's in Prague. This is what they serve most beer in. Again, same principle, holding your, your mug off to the side by a handle to avoid transferring heat to it except this is much larger than half a liter. However, um, you'll also sometimes see this in British beer, oddly enough. Um, and I think it's kind of got the same principle, although most British beers actually served at a warmer temperature than lagers. However, again, it comes down to that, that way it plays with the light and just really makes for a really nice visual experience. And of course, anyone who's been to Germany probably has found the true classic Biersteins, uh, the enamel engraved kind of fancy ones. Sometimes they have flip top lids on them, sometimes they don't. This is actually a Budweiser Bierstein. Sorry, but it got passed down to me from my grandfather and that's why it's special to me. It's a pretty intricate engraving of Clydesdales on it. Um, it's actually like almost, I think it's a liter and a half. It's a huge amount of beer you can fit into this. Um, downside is you can't see your beer very well but it's very highly insulated. Um, it's all ceramic, so it actually does hold temperature pretty well. Um, and again, it kind of keeps that, that beer nice and cold for a long time. And next up we have a Pilsner glass. This is a very long, slender, and thin glass, and it is designed so that you can see through the beer, the brilliantly clear Pilsner. It not only makes it appear even more pale in the glass, but also just highlights the bubbles rising from the bottom all the way to the top of this really long glass. It also allows you to see right through the beer and um, I really find that I enjoy drinking Pilsners out of this. Uh, in a way, it does kind of funnel aromatics into your nose, but not as effectively as you might think. Um, <laughs> but it does make for an excellent presentation. Sometimes you will also see Pilsners served in sort of variations on this. Um, sometimes the glass is just a long slender cone. Sometimes the glass has like a little hourglass shape on it. Sometimes it has a sort of almost vice beer glass style shape to it. But the whole point of it is that it's long and slender to really accentuate the colors and the carbonation of the beer. Which kind of brings us on to the next one. This is a vice beer glass. So this is a Weinsteffen vice beer glass that I got from, a, again, the same German beer garden that was near my college. Uh, really, really fun glass because again, when it's, when it's empty, it really plays with the light nicely. These are pretty cool glasses. They're very distinctive shape. Um, it's designed so that you can accommodate the massive amount of head and foam you're gonna get from a German Weiss beer. Again, it has a nice rounded lip on the edge so that you can funnel aromatics towards your face. It looks huge, but it's actually only half a liter. The point is when you pour that vice beer, you have a large, long lasting head on it that's accommodated in this bulb up here so that you don't end up basically wasting beer. And then the last specialty beer glass I'm gonna show you from the German culture is this. This is a Stange. This is a traditional Kölsch glass. You would be served something like this in Cologne. And I believe also if you are in Dusseldorf and you're ordering an alt beer, it will come in a very similar package. These are small glasses. They are very, very easy to drink from. And they usually only run about 200 milliliters. That's under eight ounces of beer. It's a very small portion, but the whole point of a Kolsch is to enjoy it, consume it quickly. Again, the similar to the Pilsner glass, it's gonna highlight the color of the beer. It's going to encourage the drinkability of the particular beer. The whole culture behind Kolsch is actually really interesting. Um, I really do recommend watching the Anthony Bourdain Parts Unknown video on Cologne if you get a chance. Uh, it kind of explains that way better than I can, um, but there's a whole culture there surrounding Kulsch and that beer and that particular glassware. So now we'll cross the English Channel to England. English beer is decidedly different than Belgian beer, which is decidedly different from German beer, right? Most English beer is ale, although there are some lagers. And throughout a good part of their history, most of their ale has been on cask. There isn't all that much to talk about when it comes to glassware from England, but there are some specifics. Most beers are gonna be served either in full pints or half pints. Um, and there are two different kinds of glassware you're gonna see most commonly. You're gonna see the nonic pint, which is this guy, has that little bulge uh, towards the top. 
and you're gonna see a rounded pint like this one. I actually ended up getting this Nonic pint from a local brewery near where I used to go to college. But I got this rounded pint most recently on my vacation to Scotland. Uh, Cairngorm Brewing in uh, Aviemore, Scotland, highly recommend. Both of these pint glasses are really designed for like stackability in bars for the most part. Um, the Nonic part allows you to actually stack it basically on top of another glass very easily. That little rounded bit on the edge of it actually serves to trap some carbonation there. It also serves as a really good marker of when to stop pouring so that your beer has foam that reaches the very edge of the glass. Especially when you're serving something like that's on nitro or on cask, it's, a, it's actually a really cool presentation. There's really no difference between the two other than just uh, the little lip on there for stackability and for capturing a little bit of carbonation, uh, but they're both really actually very fun beer glasses to drink from. They're also extremely utilitarian. Now we're talking about one random glass I have here. This is considered a flute, almost like you'd get like a champagne flute, right? Um, it is a long, tall, but overall curved glass, which functions very similarly to a Pilsner glass, except it feels a bit fancier. I got this as a wedding gift from a friend of ours that lives in Norway. Uh, and so big thank you to you, Annette, for that. I really appreciate having this in my collection. It's a really unique piece of glassware um, that you know, it does a good job of highlighting lagers, but also its rounded nature makes it good for drinking aromatic and hoppy beers. So now we'll move on to more, I guess, American styles of glassware. The, you've all seen the regular shaker pint, straight walled pint, straight edge pint. So this was actually not originally designed as a beer glass. This was designed as a shaker glass that you would mix cocktails in. Sometimes you'll still see bartenders doing this. Put your ice in this glass, put a metal glass on the inside of it and shake your cocktail up. But nowadays we have like steel mixers for that sort of thing. Uh, eventually somehow it ended up becoming like your standard beer glass. Not sure why. It's utilitarian. It gets the job done. There's really nothing special about it other than being really easy to put brands on. A few different variations on that though. There's a slightly more uh, fancier looking one that kind of tapers up towards the top there. This is a, I did not go to Mac Brewery in Tromsø as much as I wanted to. This is actually a gift from my brothers who went there several years ago. Uh, definitely a place on the bucket list. And then lastly, we have what some consider to be the ultimate pint. Um, <laughs> it's a funny looking glass. I'll get it a little bit closer here for you. This is basically a glass that is designed to kind of do it all. It's not only very stackable, but it also has this little kind of concave section here that is designed to hold on to aromatics and hold on to carbonation to release them slowly over time. It also has this large bulb here in the middle to accommodate large levels of foam, um, but then that tapers up and then comes back out to, again, funnel aromatics. Drop Zone Brewery is kind of a semi-local brewery that uh, just opened up not too long ago, so I picked this up to support them. It's also a very unique uh, kind of glass, so I guess it's a good thing to have in the collection. Of course, there's also variations like this one, which is these can-shaped glasses, which I don't think there's really any benefit to them. They tend to actually be really crappy to pour beer into because they foam really fast. If you're getting anything out of this video, it's that glassware is very subjective. You drink your beer out of what you want to drink it out of, but these are what the rest of the world kind of tends to gravitate towards for particular styles of beer. But the point of this video really is just kind of show off some of my favorite pieces of the glassware collection uh, that I've assembled over the years. It also goes to show why I actually choose specific glassware for certain types of beer. For me, it's just a great way to experience the beer on a different level than just drinking it out of a can or a glass bottle. Plus, each of these has a little story attached to it, a little memory attached to it. That makes it special to me. So let me know in the comments, what's your favorite glassware? Do you, do you care about this stuff at all on the level that I do? I suspect most people probably don't, but it's still fun. Let me know what you prefer to drink your beers out of. Is there anything I should look into adding to my collection? Um, and if so, what do you highly recommend? Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you want to support the channel, check out the merchandise store. You can pick this t-shirt up. Check out the Patreon. Check out the Amazon store. Check out the channel memberships. And if you feel inclined to, check out the super thanks button. It means a lot to me. I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook now as The Apartment Brewer. So see that for additional content as well. Thanks for being here, guys. It does mean a lot to me that you're watching all the way to the end. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.